Well, welcome to firstoffthebike.com. We are in the beautiful surrounds here of, uh, of Kona and we are talking to the Trek K-Swiss team. We're doing the rounds of some of the best athletes getting around and uh, one of those is new team member, Leslie Patterson. Leslie, who are you? Exactly. Um, I don't know. Who are you? Yeah, you <laughs> you're, very, you're very new to the team and yes. um, to be honest, when I heard yes. you got put on, we were scrambling a little bit to find some yeah, stats well, because yep. you have had a, such a varied multi-sport background. I have, yes. Uh, probably more known for Xterra. Uh, my best result there being second at World Championships in 2009 uh, and then made the jump up to Half Ironman last year. Uh, came second to Marinda Oceanside and then um, sixth at the World Champs this year in uh, Clearwater. Which is the big result. Not so much Clearwater, it was a fantastic result. For mine, it was yep. the uh, it was the second to Car Frey. I mean, every time yep. you, you're in distance of her, you, you know you've done a, a yeah. good race. And right. uh, is that for you, I guess, the first validation that this was a, right. a good switch? Definitely, totally. I mean, I'm, I'm a similar athlete to her, or, you know, would like to be. But <laughs> in terms of our attributes, uh, I'm a runner, so um, I've really developed my biking, and that's helped me put, in, put me in contention. Uh, so that I can have a good run off the bike and and really hit up these gals. So you, you, you're not a hulking figure. You're not you know you're the hulking what figure do on the you bike. Mean? <laughs> I'm sorry, I know you're, <laughs> you're not a massive figure on the bike. No. But so how do you how does the strength then? Where do you find the strength, or you know sure. how does that work for you to get stronger? Um, I actually started to work with a new coach. Uh, his name is Vince Fichera, and he's a biking coach primarily. And we did a lot of uh, climbing, a lot of big gear work on the bike. Um, you know, a lot of uh, uh, development of power and that really trans transferred over beautifully and um, do you obviously feel that it's moving in the right direction then definitely definitely so there's lots of obviously lots of girls in the sport at the moment doing really good things there is this real uh, bar raising going on I think totally. for you outside of you know the obvious is it something that you're aiming for is for Ironman and to you know and to be as a runner yep. you know raising the helping raising that bar totally and I think Marinda can a uh, inspired me in that regard to, to make me think like that it is that it is possible um, so you know Ironman's definitely in my future I think you know down the line just a little bit I'd love to master the 70.3 distance a little bit more I'd love to try and win a world title at Xterra because uh, I love that sport too so um, I'm quite fluid with where I want to go and that's what's good about this team is that they're super supportive of that. And so for how, how far can they actually raise it I mean we saw you know they're starting to run the, the 250 254s and then they lower that again and in right. the marathon and you know as a runner where do you think it's going to end I mean we're going to see someone run a you know a 249 marathon at some oh, point totally easily yeah big time because ultimately you know it's it's not out and out speed right because how many women run sub 230 without coming off the bike so then it becomes strength and efficiency and I think that that's just a matter of the right training the right person um, and you know time a little bit of time to, to get up to that standard but it's going to happen for sure. So then how again do you dedicate the time to the, the off-road the mountain bike yep. and, and do that sort of thing and I know a lot of mountain bikers use the road as a, right. as a training tool exactly. but you still need that feel. Totally. You still need to have your mojo yep. working on the single trails. Yep. So for you, is it, is it really is it hard to make that split? It is actually. Um, I think probably Julie's mentioned this, but there's always concern that you're going to injure yourself, right? And I've broken ribs, I've broken my hand, I've had all sorts of nonsense go on. So um, trying to, I, I think it's picking the right races so that they're um, structured in a way that suits both disciplines, um, both off-road and on-road. But ultimately, I do a lot of road training for the off-road, so that's always going to be beneficial. Um, but I think the off-road stuff, it makes you versatile, it makes you mentally tough, right? Because sometimes you just hit this climb and you're like, how the heck am I going to get up this? I've just got to muscle over it, right? It's not like, oh, how am I going to beat this person that's, you know, okay, so I don't beat the person. It's, no, I'm not getting up the trail unless I go boss the wall. So um, it gives you different mental versatility too. One of the new terms that's come into triathlon vernacular is the term chick. <laughs> when a girl goes past a... It's generally the pros only doing this, I think. Well, even age groupers, I mean, get involved yeah. in this a little bit too. Do you find it? Do you find it a little bit uh, not as a put down, but do you find it as a little bit of a, a bit derogatory towards women? The fact that you know people are saying, "Oh, I got passed by a girl." It's the worst thing, considering the amount of talent on you know on display in the world at the moment. Um, no, I just think it's a shift culturally. Um, you know, women have only really been competing in sport for really not that long. You know what? I don't know properly for twenty years, thirty years. So um, I can. I mean, I find it amusing. I don't find it. I don't find it disrespectful. Um, 
you know, no. Got any scalps? Any big names that you've gone past? Oh, man. Why don't we just, you know, keep a little bit of a count as to how you're going and if you chick someone, you can... I'm, I'm sure I've, I've definitely had faster runs than a lot of pro dudes. <laughs> and that, that just bums them out, especially from wearing pink. Um, and then when they see me and I'm so small, they're like, is a child just <laughs> passed me by? 15 like, to 19 category going past what us. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. And I think probably like cycling-wise, it's a really male-dominated culture. So passing a guy on the bike is a huge deal. <laughs> so, so is this for you? Is this, are you living the dream? Is this oh, totally. It's awesome. I mean, you know, uh, being out here in Kona, being on a great team, having a wonderful support. Um, doing what you love to do and you can't lose sight of that right even although there's pressure and, and, and expectation um, I'm doing this because I love to do it and that's the one thing that I want to communicate to others um, especially women in triathlon too um, I do a lot of coaching and so to pass on that message of listen regardless of what level you're at it's about challenging yourself and going on that journey and, and a journey of self discovery because it, it is, this sport is a journey of self discovery. And Do you think some girls are reluctant because it is so male dominated they're reluctant to get involved because of that right. the, I guess the difference in ratio but also the fact that they might not have that belief in themselves to, to totally. go and do it. I mean the, the women that I coach generally their self esteem is pretty low um, so my uh, approach to men is very different from women so men I tend to build them up before I break, uh, uh, break them down before I build them up women I tell, tend to build them up before I break them down but I think in America um, there's a lot more female participation um, and so it might be different from Australia uh, I'd say Australia is more it is similar to the UK um, and it definitely is challenging but you know not without I think through other women competing and other um, inspiration that comes about from that they're getting the confidence to go out and give it a go and so uh, we're certainly watching your uh, your results with interest this year what are we going to be talking about in 12 months time what do you think we'll be talking about with you what will be the A scenario uh, A scenario is world extended champ world 70.3 champ and she ran the fastest any woman has run in a half hour man easy i think so right <laughs> too easy Jeez. <laughs> not much at all well we uh, definitely you've been a, a refreshing uh change to all the other k-swiss good athletes are <laughs> boring just athletes. boring yeah, yeah horrible horrible individuals exactly thanks so much for spending a bit of time with us we look Pleasure. forward to watching uh you go around this year excellent thanks so much